There are so many preachers now, all over the world, telling you that you, since you are saved by grace, which is true, that you can now do whatever you like, that you will see make you to heaven. So I want to talk to you tonight, serious talk, father to children, because whether the devil likes it or not, because of what you are going to hear tonight and what we are going to do tonight, I will see you in heaven. I studied Paul, because when I became born again, I studied certain characters in the Bible. And one of the people I studied was Paul. Why? Number one, Paul was an academician. And I'm coming from the academic world. He has a PhD in law. There's a lot of relationship between law and mathematics. We deal in logic. I studied Paul because I wanted to become like him. And he is the one who said, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Verse 24 to 27, he says, <laughs> you want to stay on the rock? Keep your body under subjection. That's what Paul says. You can't claim that you are born again and then continue to do whatever your flesh wants to do. No way. Oh, they tell me, Jesus paid it all. I agree. Uh -uh. But the same Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2, Romans 12, 1 to 2, he said you have to present your body a living sacrifice to God. You are, uh -uh. You are now on the rock. No more rottenness. The same Apostle Paul warned us in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 14 to 31. Please read it. Write it down and read when you get home. Ephesians 4 from verse 14 to 31. He says, hey, beware of every wind of doctrine. Oh, manners of doctrines now going around. To deceive. To recapture for the devil those whom God had already saved. Can you ever believe that a preacher can stand up on the pulpit and tell the congregation that the greatest problems in the Bible are Moses and Elijah? Moses and Elijah, they were problematic. Oh. <laughs> they were the only two people who came to talk to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. You call those people problematic? It is Paul who said in Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to 2. Romans 6, 1 to 2. He said, ah, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What was the answer? Don't let anybody deceive you. Uh -uh. Anybody who tells you that once you are born again, you can continue to lie, that it doesn't matter. You can continue to cheat, that it doesn't matter. That you can continue to fornicate, that it doesn't matter. It's an agent of the devil. Quote me. Don't be moved by all those people that are preaching heaven. It's a fallacy. Heaven is a reality now. It's an agent of the devil. You can now do whatever you like. That you will see make you to heaven. It is all white fables. It is plain nonsense. I heard somebody who was saying that he knows the, the, the letters of brother Paul very well. So I studied Paul more than these people. That he has studied Paul very well. That Paul had a PhD in law. I studied Paul. Why? Paul was an academician. He has a PhD in law. PhD did not exist in the day of Paul to start with. They didn't have PhD that time. I agree. Uh -uh. So which means he has not even understood Paul to start with. I was raised for the defense of the gospel. He quoted Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Romans 6, 1 to 2. He said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is the next verse? God forbid. Which means it's not possible. He didn't say, shall we continue to sin? He said, shall we continue in tenses? Tenses. Tenses. You will never what? You will never get there. 
I heard somebody who was saying that he knows the, the, the letters of brother Paul very well. That Paul had a PhD in law, which is connected to PhD in mathematics. PhD did not exist in the day of Paul to start with. They didn't have PhD that time. So which means he has not even understood Paul to start with. Because there was no PhD at that time. Number two, Paul did not have a PhD in law. He was not a legal luminary. Paul was a tent maker. He was a tent maker. So when he says he was a master of the law, he was referring to the law of Moses, which means he was a Pharisee. That's why I say I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. The law is not legal. So that person that says he, he knows Paul to start with, he doesn't even know him because he can't even give us a successful background. Then he now says that we that are preaching grace say you can commit fornication, you can commit adultery, you will go to heaven. That is a lie and a public lie because we have never said so. Even an unbeliever knows that you cannot say you are a Christian and you are committing fornication, true or false. So you don't even need preaching for that one. Even natural sense tells you. Are we ministers of sin? How can grace that is the cure for sin be the fertilizer for sin? How can you say you took Panadol and your headache increased? Grace is the cure for sin. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Then he quoted another scripture because I need to clean this up. I need to clean this up. I was raised for the defense of the gospel. He quoted Romans chapter 6 verse 1. He said even the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is the next verse? God forbid, which means it's not possible then paul explained how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into christ we were baptized into his death don't you know he didn't say shall we continue to sin he said shall we continue in tenses 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 then he quoted first corinthians chapter 9 <laughs> That after I have preached to others, I will not be a castaway. I put my body under. Put your body under. It's, it's not a scripture for salvation. Paul was talking about ministry. That I'm preaching this ministry with a correct motive. I discipline my appetite so that I don't have a wrong motive for preaching. I will not be saying if you don't pay tight, you will not go to heaven because I want to empty your pockets. So I create a scripture that does not exist. I put my appetite under subjection so that my motive is pure. So that after I preach, I will not be, the word cast away means disqualified from reward. It's not a loss of salvation because Paul says his works shall be burnt, but he himself shall be saved. It's not a loss of salvation. Glory to God. We have to settle matters. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is not in natural elements. It's not in meat and drink. It's not in ribena and bread. It's not in olive oil. It's not in handkerchief. It's not in using comb to comb your head forward and backward. It's not in carrying walking stick like a magic wand. The kingdom of God is a spiritual reality. It's righteousness, peace, joy where? In the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy New Month. And the Lord who brought you into this month, bless and keep you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, May the great hand of God reach to you, preserve you, and keep you from falling in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, there are two videos I want us to look at. Uh, the first one was what you have listened to. And um, with all due respect, I think that um, indeed we will have the video that talks about bitterness. And I think that this whole thing is beginning to snowball into bitterness. And uh, take it or leave it. Pride is beginning to do a lot of damages to what people think they are doing.
Let's wake now, up. Um, now, um, that Church, wake up. The devil wants to nip us in the corner and is using the bitterness in our souls against each other. Let's wake you. up while we are now, busy um, fighting ourselves. Now, um, now, they are responding to Pastor E.E. Adeboye, even though for the umpteenth time, I also like to say that Deborah never mentioned anybody's name. And, um, now, but we know who Damina was talking to. Pastor Debo may be actually replying or responding to Damina's messages, but he never mentioned his name. And that, that is for those of you who would want to come and say, but he never mentioned names. But you see that he, I mean, that Damina also did not mention names. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't call anybody's name, but the narration in the video tells you who he was talking to. And uh, there is, it is not every one of these pastors. Even tell me which pastor or prophet, those of them that are attacking now, attacking themselves, which one of them has ever come out and mentioned the person's name? They don't mention names. But when they speak, they speak, we know the direction they are, you know, speaking to. Now, uh, having said that, now there was something that Ebe Damina said, but then in the end of it, he actually proved Adebo you're right. All right. When Pastor Adebo said that there is a preacher who is preaching that people who live in sin will make heaven. Now, Damina in his effort to trash that that he never said that, said that it is not what he had been saying, that you know, having a said Jesus was the antidote that we need dead against sin because yes the right gift of righteousness came into us and we inherited a new life the grace that has empowered us and has given us the power and the consciousness over sin uh though he did not mention consciousness because people say that when we be, we are not supposed to be sin conscious but grace conscious now, but the same place where they quoted Apostle Paul, who wrote that the Apostle who wrote that Romans chapter six. If you read from verse chapter five, you will understand that he started addressing the possibility of where sin abounds, grace do much more abound therein from chapter five, and then he continued to ask us, should we now, because in the multitude of sin, there is also the multiplicity of grace. Should we not be careless? That is what he asking in, in chapter 6 verse 1. Should we not be careless to live in sin because grace would abound? He said, God forbid, how shall we? Now, that may not makes it look like that sin, that in, means that now we are living in Christ, sin can no longer contain us. But the question we need to ask is, does we getting saved by Christ are we immune from the tendencies of committing sin? That is the question that we need to ask. And, um, you know, if, if we read down in uh, that Romans chapter 6, I just want to take one verse there because he, he went down and did some form of um, explaining there, which was good anyway. Now let's take it from, uh, let's take it from verse 12. Okay, from verse 11, it says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves. Now, what is the word reckon? To think. To suppose that you think. I mean, reason in a manner. Reason, account, count, suppose. Now, that is a mindset that must be shifted. If you want to understand better, okay, let's see from verse 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin. Once but in that he liveth, he liveth unto, unto God. Likewise, in the same way, think yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. This is a mindset that must, this is a mindset, a shift of mindset. It is not an automated thing. The fact that you received Jesus did not immune our flesh our flesh from sinning if it is that possible the bible would not be telling us to take note of the sins that easily beset us <laughs> there can be a twist into that as well somebody can also twist it to mean that that is not about our daily living now he said likewise reckon ye also yourselves 
to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Condition your mind. Condition your mind. That is why the Bible says, talks about the renewal of our mind daily. So it is this renewing of the mind that brings about the conditioning of the mind that, oh, you are dead to this thing, you cannot go back to them. But are there possibilities that we can fall into sin? Are there possibilities that a child of God can be tempted and he can sleep? Oh, some persons that have achieved perfection here on earth will tell you, no, that is not possible. But sometimes they can lost in their mind. Sometimes they can be angry. Sometimes they can speak angrily. Now, these are, these are the things. And sometimes pride can even enter. Now, sometimes there is a temptation to do to do bad things. Yes, you you resisted it. Did the Bible not ask us to resist the devil? If we have been immune from sin, why then do we need to resist the devil? And anybody who fails to resist the devil, falls into sin. Now, being tempted is not a sin, but yielding to the tempter's you know, antics is the sin. So the Bible said in verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. You see, let effort, determination, consistency with the knowledge of the grace you have acquired in Christ Jesus. Now, the difference is that when we received Christ, you know, when we were without Christ, of course, we were powerless, we were not even thinking of any other thing, but to satisfy the flesh. But the, the, the you know, the coming into Jesus or Jesus coming into our lives now made our spirit alive and conscious to the fact that we have been bought to the fact that there is a god that that you know we are, we are answerable to to the fact that there is the god that loves us and that gives us the grace to think the grace to say no i cannot do this all right neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin so the possibility to yield this is an instruction so when the apostle exclaimed, God forbid, it's like that should not even be thought of us again. How is it possible that after knowing the difference between this and that, we will not come back again to live in it? It's, 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 it's like saying, you know, should you go back to your vomit to eat your, your, your vomit because you're, you're hungry? You say, God forbid, God forbid, how can I? I would rather stay hungry than going back to eat my vomit. My vomit. That does not mean that a madman cannot do that. I, I, I don't want to say, say much because somebody might be eating food now. We have seen experiences. But the Bible said that as a dog goes back to his vomit, so a man returns to his sin. So that, that tell me it is an Old Testament Bible anyway. Tell me that. So, neither yield ye your members. Now, when you recon, when you think, when you consider the fact that just as the Lord Jesus died once and came back to life and death has no power over him again, so also let your mindset be like, oh, you have died unto sin and have been resurrected in Jesus. Now, let not sin have no power over you anymore. Don't, and how would that not happen? How it will not happen? Is that you consistently not yielding your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Ye are not under the law, but under grace. So sin shall not have dominion over you when you don't yield to him. And remember, the Bible tells us that to whomsoever we yield our members to, we become slave of that person. If we yield our members to sin, we become, we become slaves unto unrighteousness, to unrighteousness. If we yield our members to the Spirit of God, now how are we even compelled and commanded not to walk in the flesh? Because if we, walk, if we do walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the demands of the flesh. These are instructions. So if a preacher does not make these things clear, thank God he said he's not, he's not advocating that uh, people should go back and live in fornication and whatever kind of sin. But have you made it clear that those who have received Jesus purportedly and are found also living in the old life that they claim to have left, that their destruction and damnation is hell? You have not made it clear. The other day he said, 
if a man remains a homosexual and dies in homosexuality in as much as that person has said he has received Jesus, now how is it possible that the grace, this same grace that he said is makes it impossible for any, but because that is what is implying for a child of God to, to, to sin, to live in sin, how is it possible that the same grace is not strong and capable enough to change the mindset of somebody who says he's a man, but he sees himself as a woman? She's a woman, but sees herself as a man. How is the grace of Christ not... In fact, that is what the grace does perfectly. The grace changes, the grace transforms. This gift of life, this gift of righteousness in Christ Jesus, it transforms. But the thing is that the person who is receiving the gift must continually renew him, his mind. It is the renewal of the mind that makes the difference. That renewal of the mind is, is, is necessary even for our everyday life. If we must live as victors and not as victims, there must be this, this conscious renewal of the mind, changing the way you think. Right, so I, I I don't see the reason for all this bitterness. Now, in fact, when we when we, we when we talk like this, I, I hope that those of you who are so I don't know how to how to address you people that are obsessed by title. How many times did Damina call Apostle Paul Paul there? Even called him brother Paul. And I know that if I call Ebe Damina brother, some of you will be like, "Who are you to to refer to him as a brother? What is wrong with you people?" How many times did he refer to Apostle Paul as Paul, 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 Paul? And even our Lord Jesus, we call him Jesus, just Jesus like that. But he was there busy calling him Paul, Paul. He didn't, he didn't append apostle. Of course, I'm not saying that that that, that is necessary, but it is, it is a big deal for so many of you. And that is what we are looking at now because the bitterness that some of these preachers are exhibiting, Ebedamina is bitter. You see, in trying to... To put out there what you think you believe. You don't have the right over anybody's soul to compel people to believe in what you believe. You put your, your ideas, you put your convictions out there, leave it there. If you are preaching the gospel of Christ, people, people will be convinced by the Holy Spirit. At the same time, if you are not preaching the gospel of Christ, and what you are dishing out is the, the, you know, the doctrine of demons and devils. Of course, spirits also will make people believe it. Because there are people, the Bible says that this is a time that, that people will heap to themselves. When they have developed issues, ears, they will heap for themselves teachers and preachers that will tell them what they, they like to hear. So it doesn't really matter whether people follow you or not. Now, what matters is do what the, the things you are teaching. Are you sure you're not contradicting the Bible? So, now, the other thing that I need to uh, address is whether Paul was a lawyer or not, and whether he had a PhD in law or not. I think that people should actually relax. We're not in a war. We are not fighting against anybody. When somebody made a statement or makes a statement um, that is metaphoric, we should understand that. You know, it is only when we we are actually fighting against ourselves that we need to twist and misinterpret the intentions of, of uh, you know, the persons, what they intended to achieve by using words. Now, then I don't know why he had problem with Paul being a lawyer. Of course, he was a lawyer. Who is a lawyer? A lawyer is a person that studied law or practices law. Now, you can study law and you, you didn't go into practice. That does not take anything away from you being a lawyer. And they know that in those days, the, the law of Moses was the law that the people of Israel were governed by. Of course, that was what they used to, to condemn Jesus. Yeah, they sought an occasion, a witness against Jesus from their laws. And some said that, they, that he was making himself equal with God. They, they termed that to be blasphemy. So the people of the time where, you know, it was the law of Moses that was their law, their civil law at that time. There was no different law. There was no political law. It was still that same law. You know, and that was the law that Paul, the apostle, studied. So nobody would be termed to be wrong if he classified Apostle Paul as a lawyer. Yes, when he became converted, his main occupation, you know, aside the gospel, was tent, ma tent making. We have some police officers who are 
practicing they are police officers but they study law they they don't have their own chambers now but they are lawyers we have actors who are lawyers they studied law but they abandoned that and they are into acting but that does not take anything away from them being lawyers so paul was a lawyer all right so if anybody said paul was a lawyer you don't have anything against it because he didn't study the law according to the the constitution of nigeria or the constitution of, of uk what they had in those days was the law of moses that you you referred to right and in uh, first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 there is please uh i will i will beg you read the bible for yourself read the bible for yourself see my heart bleeds for those of you i really i feel so i feel saddened in my heart and i don't know how to communicate this but i hope that the spirit of god will show mercy to you of course i've just said that it is not a must use accept anything that anybody says but please can you cross check with the scriptures it is it, it is possible for people to be speaking big grammars additional things out there but have you verified have you verified when he uh, interpreted the what it means to be a castaway so it is not about salvation that you cannot lose your salvation now, it is the same person that is telling you that he is not asking you to continue in your sin then what motivation is he giving you when he assures you that even if you are continuing your sin, you cannot lose your salvation? What is he saying? Is he not contradicting himself? At the end of the day, he ended up proving Pastor Deboe right. Now, that First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, let us read from verse 25. And every man that's, that's private for the mastery is temperate in all things. Everybody that is competing for a prize has self-control is disciplined in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible except you think that you just being a christian you don't have a price you don't have a crown that jesus christ has set to give to you but that is there is a crown there is a price we are running a race whether you're a pastor or not whether you're a preacher or not we are running a race that at the terminal point we shall receive the crown or as those that have conquered and won the race. Now it's telling you that for you to be rewarded, crowned, there is need for discipline. Your flesh will demand so much from you. Don't listen to anybody that tells you that being born again takes away the, the possibility of you sinning. It is a lie. It is not true. Brother, it is not true. Do you know that when Apostle Peter behaved hypocritically in in um, in Galatia, where Paul reported that he, he rebuked him. Don't you know that that was sin? Hypocrisy. It was a condition of the mind. Living a double life. That was sin. All right? Now, when the Lord Jesus was sending out the people, when he breathed upon them, gave them the Holy Spirit by impartation, Judas Iscariot was one of them that received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We, we can say he was not born again, but at least he was among those that went out to cast out devils. And even when the Lord Jesus was saying that they should rejoice, not because demons obeyed them, but they should rejoice that their names were have been written in the book of life, he didn't say except Judas. Demas was once a partner in Paul's ministry with Paul. He was once a partner with Paul. But just uh, let, let's, let's, let's just continue. He says, in verse 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. The first, the first responsibility of every believer, whether you're a bishop or pope, the first responsibility is your personal life. That is the race, your personal lifestyle, that which makes you close to God. That is the race. Preaching or no, or you know, being a, a preacher or not a preacher, as in by, uh, by implication, a pastor or whatever, general overseer, that is a side. Now, every child of God is running, that is a personal thing. So, that was what Apostle Paul was trying to pass to these people. Therefore, so run I, because we are all in the race. 
Whether you were born again yesterday, got, got born again 40, 50 years ago before my mother was born, and you're still alive here, it is still a race that we are running. So Apostle Paul said, every man that striveth, now every man, in verse 20 he says, so as every man is running with discipline, so I therefore run, not as uncertainly, not as a person that does not know, you know, that is not sure of what he is aiming at. It's not like the one that is beating the air. He said, so run not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Some of us don't even know our direction. Some of us don't even know. Now, you listening to me, if you are not, if, there are some of us that don't even know if we are born again, if we are saved. You don't even know if you are going to go to heaven. So he has told us that there is nothing like a locational heaven. Well, listen, verse 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, listen, this might not be literally, you know, may not be interpreted as literally having preached just by being the virtue of being an apostle, by your virtue of. Being a Christian, so you confess to people, and people knew you as a Christian. Your life has been observed by many. Now, how will it be that on the last day, those that knew you as a Christian will look at you and you are in the same place with them? Those that you have told, you have bragged for, that Jesus is the giver of life. That without Jesus, nobody goes to heaven, nobody has eternal life. And at the end of the day, you that has Jesus, you that had Jesus, or so it was, at the end of the day, you are found in the company of those that never had Jesus while they were here. And so Apostle Paul was saying, lest I become a castaway, Domina explained that castaway out. Please let us look at the meaning of that word, castaway. It is um, genesis of the Strong's Concordance. Adokimos, as a negative party, particle by implication unapproved that is rejected okay unapproved that is rejected by implication worthless literally or morally cast away rejected reprobate rejected cast away so he is telling you that what apostle paul meant was that that being cast away not being after preaching he would be denied his reward as a preacher no, 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 no. Cast away means cast away. It can also be interpreted as rejected. Rejected. So, it, this word, King James Version, it, it occurs in, it called in King James Version six times as reprobate. Cast away once, rejected once. Eight times in eight different verses. All right? Now, what I'm trying to do is, um, I'll put it out there. I'm, I'm just like I'm putting it out here now. Uh, it is left to you to accept it. But mind you that bitterness is destroying some fabrics of the Christian faith. And what it is doing is that even some, some followers are towing the path of their pastors. Now, this clip, I found it in a channel of a person I believe is a follower of Ebed Damina. Look at the caption he gave it to it. He meaning the person he believes is in competition with his with his own idol, Ebed Damina. But that is what you know it is creating. And Femi Lazarus has something to say yet on what is happening in the church. Let's wake up, church. Wake up. The devil wants to nip us in a corner and is using the bitterness in our soul against each other. Let's wake up. While we are busy fighting ourselves, the devil is doing, they are playing fast one, fast one. We look at songs that people were singing and were crying, breaking out in tongues, breaking out, accepting Jesus in different nations, accepting Jesus. We say it's not doctrine. 
And while we are busy confused, hey, which one is, which one is not? Those who are singing the yaga yaga yo, they just keep producing. Nobody's complaining if that is doctrine. They have been filled day. Christians are now deleting songs that won't set them on fire. And we are not aware that the devil is on our matter. Let's wake up. The word for this season, stay focused. Advance unapologetically. Let those talking do the talking. Those walking do the walking. Unapologetically. Don't wait to explain yourself. The name of Jesus will surge and be made famous through you. We have come to that season that there's going to be new, strange, but audacious voices. People forged and prepared by God himself. The church will no longer be referred to as mushroom centers. God is raising people that will change the narratives. What God wants to do with you, even you won't believe it. Don't look at where you are. Look from where you are. Do you know what the devil has always used to limit the church? It is the attempt to fix God into a box. We have battled with this for over 50 years in the move of God in Nigeria. We come back to the same point again in a true way or in a local way that what God just wants the church to do is about the gospel. Uh, yes, it is. But there are mountains to be taken. While we are just getting strong on microphone, darkness is pumping people in a place where they can make one policy and all of us will drop our mic. I make bold to tell you, not everybody here will hold the mic. Some of you will be Esther's in the palace. Because of you, we will survive. Because God will strategically place you somewhere. He will place you there as his own strategy. We're going to have soldiers who are not wearing uniform as undercovers in music, in art and culture, in sport and entertainment. If we go by this mic alone, not everybody will come to the light. But there are many of you that God will strategically place in nations. Sometimes the nations you are going to help, they are still denying you visa now. Don't be discouraged. You are still their helper. It does not appear what we shall become. Their eyes may not see well, but you hold the profession of your faith. So we're in the season. Darkness is covering the earth. The darkness and serious level of darkness, the people. Everywhere. Now, I took my time to find out if there is any word translated as channel, channel in the Bible, um, that is literally channel. Yes, in some trans translations, there are some translations that use channel. Um, but then we know that channel means a way. It means a path, a pathway, direction, all right? A pipe that is directing water from one source to the end where it is dispensed is a channel. So, so now, um, unfortunately, I also see that I bet that many is not the only person actually who has criticized that song. And what I just intend to do is I will just leave it to you. You can search, look for um, six three eight eight in the um. The, the strong concordance the word that can be translated to channel or canal in hebrews is peleg p-e-l-e-g in some instances it is spelled as palag and that also can be channels of water pathway of water streams of water and there are bible chapters and verses that spoke about this but one that is very prominent for me that is similar to what we we had we have in that song is in Proverbs chapter twenty one, verse one. There, yeah, the Bible says that the king's heart, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. Now, the that is the, the word rivers. There, in some translations, they translated as streams of water. Now, the word rivers there is the word peleg in hebrew peleg and it is small channel of water or as irrigation river stream so now and it, the wordings of that song channel of my spirit open up now if there is no pathway to your spirit of course there's a pathway to your spirit that is the reason why either the spirit of god can connect to your spirit or the spirit of the devil can connect to your spirit. That is a channel. There's a pathway to it. There's a pathway to the you that is in the inside. Your spirit. So when when it is a channel of my spirit open up, I am with my father. Who is the father? You know, as human, sometimes you want to you you want to let me not use the word that they, they say now it is um a cultic word to ascend. But my brethren, we can ascend in spirit. I said in another video that the devil 
everything Satan is using, he borrowed them from God and corrupted them. Talk about blood sacrifice. The devil borrowed it from God now. Are we going to say that? That the Lord is not a spirit that requires blood? Of course. He has been asking for blood until he decided to have a perpetual blood of his son and then before him all of the time. So, now, when you say channels of my spirit, uh, if you are, if sometimes, if sometimes you want to pray and, you know, at the beginning you found it so hard, it was difficult, you were just struggling, you were struggling, you were struggling, you're struggling is that and you after some that time after sometimes now, it's like now, something it's like it's something in your spirit, spirit and you you, know, you find yourself traveling put that in the comment section so when that the the, the words of song is channels of my spirit open up i am with my father open up no boundaries no limitation I just want to be with my father let deep your spirit is deep let deep call unto deep the bible says deep call it unto deep so I don't know what is wrong in that song that people will not allow the song rest. See, for the shallow-minded ones, I don't know doom sin or yeko. Let us not be hypocrites. That song has nothing with autism. It's nothing with cult. Every ounce of the wordings of that word, of that song, is damn biblical. Biblical. But well, anyway, um, I leave it here. God bless you. Let's know what you think about it. I want to beg you, even though we disagree, let us disagree with love. Let's not have bitterness. Those that are fighting for Damina, fighting for their general overseers, don't fight. You will still go to hell if you don't repent. Don't let anybody deceive you. Jesus says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. I don't have strength for those that twist the scripture. I don't have time for you because there is no scripture that you give to them that they don't have what to use and twist it. The ways of an apostate is a very difficult one. They are reprobates. See you in the next video. Today, from me to you. Shalom.